you are good and your mercy endures forever. Oh, Father, you are good and your mercy follows us, leads us, goes with us wherever we go. Father, you are so good. faithfulness glory to your name hallelujah 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 we bless you for your faithfulness to us we thank you father God we enter your gates with thanksgiving and we come into your courts with praise we thank you for your presence your anointing that destroys the yoke we thank you will not leave here like we came this morning in Jesus name Father, you have a plan for this service. You've been talking to me about it. We receive your plan. And Father God, we thank you. We mix our faith because we know it's not automatic that you get your way in this service this morning. So we mix our faith with your plan. And we say, Father, your will be done in this time together. In Jesus' mighty name. And Father, we thank you for meeting needs all across this room. We thank you, Father, for answering questions things that people have wondered about father we thank you for answers this morning in jesus mighty name and father we'll not just be hearers of your word but we'll be doers of your word 
As we walk in the light of it, we thank you, Father, the plan of God for us, this church, for our city, for the nation. It will move forward in Jesus' mighty name. Somebody mix your faith with that this morning. We thank you for it, Father, in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. And we're here to hear words from you, utterances from heaven. Father God, things that will uh, bring heaven to earth, things that will bring answers and understanding. And Father, enable us to walk in not just your good or your acceptable, but the perfect will of God in Jesus' mighty name. And everyone that agreed said, Amen. Amen means so be it, right? So we're in agreement. We're agreeing with that. We're saying it'll all happen. Praise the Lord. And uh, it's, it's just a matter of us just receiving it and walking in faith, right? Yes. Turn to your make, neighbor and make a good confession of faith and tell them God's plan for this service will come to pass. And we'll all go forward in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. We'll progress in revelation. We'll know him better. We'll cooperate with him better. Isn't that right? And uh, he'll get his way in, 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 uh, in our lives. Praise the Lord. So greet somebody. Tell them it's so good to see you in church this morning. It's good to sit beside you. Glory to God. Hallelujah. It's good to see you. It's good to be seen. Praise God. No better place to be than be in church, right? I said no better place to be than in church, right? Hallelujah. Pastor's back, so you got to get, you, you got to, <laughs> I was, wasn't saying it for that reason. I'm saying you got to, you got to let me know you're, you're interested in what he's saying, right? Praise the Lord. So it's good to see everybody. And if you're hungry, you'll get what you came for. If you're not, then leave it on the table because I'm going to take yours home. Praise God. It's good to have everybody in service this morning. Pastor Debbie's preaching in Kansas City. So uh, that's where she is, if you're wondering. But we're going to have a wonderful time this morning. I'm going to uh, just say a uh, few things later about some things. But I want Brother Carlos to come up and uh, give us some announcement. He's got all the answers this Glory. morning. <laughs> Glory. I got some of the answers more coming in the service here. Don't want to be a hog of it, you know. I uh, do want to have a couple of new announcements. As you know, we have corporate prayer the first Wednesday of each month. So in August, we're having cat meetings, so we're moving uh, the prayer up a week. So the Wednesday of July 31st will be our corporate prayer. So we're prepared for that. Then we'll get ready for the cat meeting right after that. Um, water baptism today. Uh, the rumor, well, I guess it's not a rumor. Lots of people are getting water baptized. Even lots and lots of more people are coming to watch them. So it's going to be at Coke College, the MAPS, or in the hospitality foyer. Um, if you're being baptized, uh, be there by 12.45 to receive instructions. Then the teaching are going to start at 1 p.m. And if you are one of the lucky recipients that ordered a cafe meal deal, They'll be available right after service in the cafe for you. Also, there's going to be seating available in the cafe to eat it before you go over there. If that's an option for you, we're just letting you know uh, that is available. So thank you. Uh, next week, we are doing some landscaping. So Monday and Tuesday at 5 to 9 p.m., we're asking for help for that. Uh, please sign up in the hospitality for you. Uh, you will meet in the east parking lot. That's the bookstore uh, side there. So thank you for all you do. We greatly appreciate it. Uh, the campus is beautiful. But we're going to just spruce it up a little bit more. Then, if need be, they're also we're going to do another week next Monday and Tuesday, same time, five to nine. If everything is not completed, so you're aware of that. And then um, I mentioned Jim Cat meeting. Uh, we've uh, mentioned this a couple times. Reminding you, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, immediately after the, uh, the first service, there's going to be prayer school every day. Uh, Pastors um, uh, Ramos's, uh, Noel and Ruby will be doing the prayer school. Then on Wednesday only, um, uh, Reverend David Ellis will be doing the 
uh, worship school, and you do need to sign up for that to attend that. You go to eberlyministry.org uh, for that. And then we need help. Um, we need help setting up. Uh, please, uh, to set up, it's going to be on Friday, August 2nd at 5.30 p.m. in the Family Center. The sheets are out there. If you're able to help that, that will be a blessing. Also, they need help in preparing the meals for the Jim Cat meeting. Uh, there are sign-up sheets for the different times. I know some of the slots are already filled, but if you can help uh, fill up the rest of that, that would be greatly appreciated. And as you know, receiving um, uh, offerings for the expenses only, um, for the camp meeting to bring the ministers in, to house them, uh, expenses like that. If you're giving in the offering envelope, use the other line and put uh, camp meeting expenses uh, for that. We're sowers and reapers. If we're giving into this, just believe, you know, for extra to come in. You know, whatever you have on your heart or whatever you're desiring for. So thank you for that. And then my last announcement, don't forget the book of the summer. Uh, it's uh, by John uh, McMillan, The Authority of the Believer. So I'll we'll be meditating on that. We're going to be on the same page. And that's all my announcements, sir. Amen. <clears throat> um, I'm just going to go ahead and go right into the tithes and offerings because we were going to do a meet and greet today, but for time's sake and the baptismal, get the baptismal, get to the baptismal on time. And the preacher's got so much in his heart today to say. So, uh, but let's just go ahead and receive this morning's tithes and offerings. Are you ready to give this morning? If you need an envelope, you can raise your hand. The ushers will serve you. How many of you know? Uh, I guess it was down in the Lee Summit, actually. Uh, last Sunday it was. I was preaching on honor. Some of you might have heard some of that. That's been in my spirit for about a month, and, I, and I've got a lot on the inside. But let me share something with you concerning honor in the offering. How many of you know we often talk about honoring God when it comes to the offering? But I want to read some other verses. How many of you have ever read 1 Timothy 6, 1? Let the, as many servants as are under the yoke. He's talking about employers, uh, employees under an employer. Let as many, let's put it that, let's use that term. Let as many uh, employees as are under the yoke or employed by an employer count their own employers worthy of all honor. Okay, so we're up back to this honor. That the name of God and His doctrine be not blasphemed. And then he goes on to say that they have, uh, they that have believing masters or employers, let them not despise them because they are brethren, but rather do them service because they are faithful and beloved partakers of the benefits. Uh, these things teach and exhort. And he goes on and says, if he teach something else, then you're just not right if you read the rest of that passage. But then Colossians chapter number 3, verse number 22, servants, or we, we'd say employees, obey in all things your masters or employers according to the flesh, not with eye service as men pleasers, but in singleness of heart, fearing God. And whatsoever do you do, do it heartily as to the Lord and not unto men. Okay, so we've got a lot being said here. Uh, employ he's talking about employee and employer relationships. Let's just get in our business this morning. What do you say? How many of you know we talk about the honor of God? And here he talks about honoring God through honoring people. And in this case, our employer. And then he says over here in Colossians, he says, uh, not with eye service as men pleasers, but as singles in heart. In other words, if you wouldn't do it, and if you wouldn't say it in their presence, don't do it and don't say it at the house or around the water cooler whenever they're not listening. <clears throat> Amen. Come on, somebody. Uh, and whatever you do, do it heartily as unto the Lord. In other words, work for them as if they were Jesus. Amen. Um, so, and then he goes on, there's, there's so many scriptures about this. Titus 2, 9, it says, exhort servants to be, or we'd say employees, to be obedient to their own masters or employers, and to please them well in all things, not answering again, nor prolorning, but showing all good fidelity, and that, that's loyalty, right? How many of you know loyalty includes what you say with your mouth? Uh, but showing all good fidelity, they may adorn the doctrine of God, our Savior, in all things. Um, so we've got a lot being said here. Let me just kind of boil it down. Would you, would you like to hear what, what God's been talking to me about concerning honor here? Amen. 
And so it tells us to serve as, serve as a, or, you know, do, let's, work, let's say work our job. Work our job as if we're working for Jesus. Amen. 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 Uh, and then he said, as if we were serving the Lord with all honor. He mentions honor, and then he mentions loyalty, and then he mentions uh, not just with eye service. And so um, we're to serve the Lord. Uh, you, you can't say, Lord, I'm believing you for prosperity and badmouth your employer. Amen. Amen. Um, you know, we've got to teach honor to the body of Christ, like I was talking about last Sunday, but we have to teach it in all realms because sometimes things, people that, uh, people are being tripped up by things they don't realize are tripping them up. In other words, he's basically saying a failure to honor your employer who gave you that job, right? Uh, and, and, and is paying you, the fail to honor them is to undermine your faith for your prosperity. Isn't that right? How many of you know you can't sit around the dinner table and badmouth your employer who gave you the paycheck to buy what you're eating on the table? <clears throat> okay, that, they're over here. They're starting to get it. How about over here? <laughs> Praise the Lord. And so we need to teach uh, congregations, we need to teach our people uh, to believe God and use your faith for your employer and thank God for them, honor them, appreciate them, and don't, and, and don't speak against them in, with your words. Because that's dishonorable. A man that agreed to pay you a paycheck and could have hired somebody else, but he hired you, right? You sit around and complain. Well, at first you didn't do it because you were thankful for the job. But as time went on yeah. and you became familiar with his faults and his failures and that, that he's a human being and that he's not perfect and, and so forth and so on, and then you start criticizing, you've moved from being thankful and honorable over to being dishonorable, and you cut yourself. Because remember the Bible says, they that honor me, I will honor. And honoring God oftentimes means honoring people. Yes. Amen. Amen. Yeah, but they're not right. Well, he even said here, not only to the good, uh, uh, but also to the froward. You ever read that in your Bible? These are verses that you don't see on people's bumper stickers, but they are, they are in the Bible. <laughs> Amen. Amen. So, um, so uh, everything that you do, in everything that you do, serve and do it as an, honorable way, as, a, as an honorable person. Not because they are always honorable. How many of you know we are not to be honorable if somebody else is honorable? We are to be honorable because of who lives on the inside of us. They are not our standard. Our standard is what did God tell me to do and how did he tell me to live and how did he tell me to guard my mouth? Amen. Amen. I'm, so, I'm just going to go ahead and say it. So the word says to be faithful with uh, what belongs to another man's or you'll never have what is your own. Isn't that what the Bible says? Luke chapter number six, uh, 16. Uh, uh, 16, uh, be faithful with another man or you'll never have that which is your own. And that's what people don't understand. When we're faithful and honorable, it puts us in a position for more that, sh uh, that is ours in, in, uh, in that paycheck. Really, God will bless us through many avenues other than a paycheck, but we all know that we want to be increased in our paycheck. I'm an employer. I know a little bit about this. I've been an employee on the other side. I know what it's like to uh, have employees that just do bare minimum, and you can tell they don't even want to be there. You don't tend to want to give them much promotion, much opportunity, much, much increase, but it's those that are always wanting, well, can I do anything? Can I help you? And they're always willing to just do the extra, and, and you can tell that they're honorable. They're the ones that you tend to promote. Amen. Well, just keep looking straight ahead. Praise the Lord. <laughs> How many of you know it's easy whenever others are, who, who, who are, who are either unsaved or their minds aren't renewed, that down there at the job, whenever they slip into a mentality of losing their, or, or loosing their tongue and not holding their tongue and criticizing, it's easy to take on their mentality and start picking up what they are in, i.e. dishonor. Come on, somebody. And start entering into that and lose your own blessing. I'm just highlighting something that the Lord highlighted to me because this is important. People, this is tripping people up and they don't realize it's tripping them up. Well, they, you know, they, they don't pay me enough. Did you agree to that paycheck whenever you went there? 
I don't know why it's so quiet in this Presbyterian church, but <laughs> come on, somebody. You agreed to that paycheck when you went there. It might be that attitude that's keeping you from getting a raise because it's not them giving you the raise. It's the Lord moving on them that gives you the raise. Amen. Uh, you stay honorable. You stay right. You stay right before God, and God will see to it that things work out. <laughs> Hallelujah. Um, so um, if you get around people who, uh, who are so easily, you know, who so, so quickly lose uh, control of their tongue and talk and criticize, you need to cut yourself off from fellowship with those people. Amen. <laughs> well, they're not a Christian. My boss is not a Christian. He doesn't do everything right. Remember, we already talked about that. Right? And so uh, don't pick that up. You know, there's a lot of, there's a lot of uh, dishonor in our culture. And, and uh, without being renewed with the Word of God, in our minds with the Word of God, we're going to pick up the culture around us rather than the standard of heaven, which he says is a big issue whenever it comes to financial prosperity. Amen. So tell your neighbor, uh, zip it around the water cooler. <laughs> Isn't that right? Zip it around the dinner table. Yeah, come on, somebody. Zip it around the, the water cooler and the, and the table. Praise the Lord. And so this can be a reason people are struggling financially. This can be a contributing factor to why they're struggling financially. They don't thank God. They're, rather than thanking God for the paycheck, even if it's not enough. That was the agreement you made when you went there. Even if it's not enough for you, be thankful for what you have. How many of you know that opens the door for more to come? This is just good pastoral preaching right here. This won't make you swing from the chandeliers, but if you do it, it'll make you swing from the chandeliers. Amen. So this is the reason some people can be struggling financially. They don't connect the dots to this, and, which is dishonor. They don't connect the dots from dishonor to their struggle financially. But, but you can see this in the Word over and over again, which I don't have time to get into it today. But basically the point is um, don't, let, don't let the people around you set your standard of honor. Honor means you protect. And that includes with your words. Uh, you can't say uh, criticism over here uh, or, or offense over here, so words of offense over here and words of faith in your prayer closet. Over here cancels it out over here. Praise the Lord. Well, I can tell I needed to say this this morning. Amen. Some people don't have their minds renewed. They're not your standard. With the way they talk and the way they talk about their employer, they're not your standard. When are we going to get the, get, get the, 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 uh, the understanding that heaven's heaven and God's Word is our standard? Amen. You need to get to the place that if you really plan to prosper and get ahead financially, get to the place to where you have this inside of you all the time. Others may, but I may not. How they live is their business. Whether they prosper is their business. But I'm going for the highest. I'm going for a divine flow of supply. And so others are not my standard. They may do that, but that's not my standard. Praise the Lord. And so uh, it's so easy to start uh, piling in when others are criticizing. But you just need to excuse yourself. Amen. Just, and, you know, some people aren't going to, they're going to think you're whatever. They're going to probably, you know, say words about you if you're not going to enter into it. Because how many of you know the devil is the author of division? He's always trying to divide people with, between, you know, social status, racial uh, backgrounds, employee, employer, men versus women. He's a, he's a divider. And we are to have nothing to do with it. Tell your neighbor, he's preaching better than your amen, and that's for sure. <clears throat> Praise the Lord. You can't use your faith for your employer and then uh, criticize him at the same time. So, so, so uh, did, you, uh, did you receive that? Did you receive it with joy? Hallelujah. If you need to make some corrections, make some corrections. These are things maybe sometimes we don't talk enough about, but it's, it's all in the Bible. It's, uh, it's words of advice for those that want to really prosper with divine supply. Hallelujah. 
I know a lady, um, a, a lady that actually practiced this to the point that she, she her, her manager came to her. They kept promoting her and kept promoting her uh, and because she was so honorable towards them. And, and really, she had no qualifications for the promotion she kept getting. But she was so honorable towards them that uh, eventually, uh, because she was getting into, she had served in this corporation 36 years. And because, because she was getting into her uh, senior years, she was wanting some less responsibility. In other words, you know, they had kept promoting her, which meant more responsibility. How I many of you know that goes with it? And uh, b- better pay and so forth. They kept promoting her. But anyway, because of her uh, senior, uh, because she was getting older, she was wanting not as much responsibility. So she uh, asked them if she could have a lesser position. She said, that's all right if you want to cut my pay. And uh, they said, you don't understand. And she said, what is it that I don't understand? They said, well, you know, this is the manager talking to her. She said, the very, uh, this is a big corporation. The very owner of this corporation himself gave us instructions. No matter what position she is in, she will stay at the same pay. And no matter what she does, you never fire her. And she retired there working not, not very much at all, but making the same pay as when she was on the higher tiers of management. That's what honor will do for you. Amen. Well, let's stand to our feet. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. See, it's not just all shouting and praising God and and saying, I'm believing for prosperity. This This is part of it, too. I said, this is part of it, too. Very, very important that we are honorable people in all our relationships. We're honorable with our mouth. We, we guard our tongue. Praise the Lord. If you want to lose me as your friend, start talking about my pastor, Pastor Nancy. You know what I'm talking about? Or start talking about somebody that God told me to honor. Then I've got to make a choice to either be friends with you or hold to my divine connection. And I, I've decided, I've already decided what I'm going to do on that. And it ought to be that way with your employer. Somebody said, well, I just can't work there. Only. Okay, go somewhere without words of criticism. Go find another job and, and get one that you can, you know, not be critical about. But don't try to pull anybody else out of there. Praise the Lord. Father, we thank you for your word. It is our answer, Father. You have so many things to teach us from your, from your word that, that uh, really, really brings us understanding of what's tripping us up. Father God, if we see areas today we, 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 uh, that we need to make adjustments in, Father, we just, we just repent. We turn away and we say we're not going to live that way anymore because you told us to honor and you said honor is a big issue concerning finances because they that honor you, you will honor. We bless you today, Father, as we make these adjustments. We thank you for things flowing better than they have been. If they've not been flowing well, we thank you they'll flow better in the name of Jesus. And we thank you for reminding us of these things. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Amen. Tell your neighbor, I receive what the Word says this morning. Amen. You may be seated. No. 
done good things for me. How about you? Amen. You may be seated. Uh, we want to lay hands. Actually, I, I guess we could stay standing. We're going to pray with somebody and for somebody. You could remain standing. Sorry about that. <laughs> but uh, but uh, where's Tim Carter? Is he here this morning? Tim Carter. I believe he's here. Is he here? He's coming. There he is. He's, he's busy ushering. Uh, on Thursday, he's going in to have a shoulder replacement. And so we're going to believe God for a successful process on that. Amen. How many of you know Jesus said to Brother Hagin back uh, years ago, I believe it was in a vision, he said, tell my people that if they go to a doctor and are under a doctor's care, that I'll speed up the healing process. I believe he'll do that, don't you? God's not opposed to doctors. Did you know that? Doctors are really trying to help us. <laughs> and so, uh, but, uh, so we're going to agree for a successful process that the angels will guide the doctor's hands and then uh, there'll be a quick, speedier than normal recovery. Praise the Lord. So reach out your hand towards Brother Tim. Father, thank you for Brother Tim. And Father, thank you for your care over his life. Thank you, Father, for the uh, ministering spirits that will assist in this operation as he has this shoulder replaced. We come into agreement right now. We lay our hands on him. We come into agreement. Thank you, Father, for the peace of God that passes all understanding, that keeps his heart and mind. But also thank you for a successful surgery in the name of Jesus. We use our faith for that because you're always on our side and you're a good God. And we thank you, Father, for guiding the doctor's hands. We thank you, Father, for a quick and speedy recovery and uh, the process uh, being sped up by the power and anointing of the Holy Ghost in the name of Jesus so that it marvels the doctors. And we'll give you all the praise for it, Father, in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Praise God. You agree with that? Praise God. You do too. Amen. Amen. Thank God for it. Well, you may greet your neighbor before you're seated. Just tell them it's so good to see you this morning. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Well, did you bring your Bible this morning? We're going to do something a little different today. So, uh, because... Um, uh, just because the Lord just kept prompting me, I, I just couldn't get unction last night. I was struggling to figure out, not figure out, but you know what I'm talking about, just get the mind of God on what to go, what, which direction to go. And then I got a text uh, that told me that there had been an assassination attempt on President, former President Donald Trump. And so I uh, said, my goodness, and I looked it up and listened to it for a while and then turned it back off endeavored to get back into what I thought maybe God wanted me to do and I couldn't and I realized then why I couldn't get any unction on it because right, right. he had some direction he wanted me to go that uh, I believe is going to help us all understand uh, some things so uh, how many of you are ready to hear what I believe God wants us to say how many of you heard about I think uh, I think it might have been two weeks two weeks ago I, I, don't, I didn't look it up but I made mention of the fact right before right before service uh, or something, I made mention of the fact that God had said some things to me about the election, and I kind of was teasing you like I like to do. It's so fun teasing you because you like it so much, you know. <laughs> but I was teasing you if you really want to hear it, then be hungry enough for it. So uh, that's because it was stirring in me that God was maybe wanting me to say some things. And so, um, but then whenever this happened, I realized, yep, I know what I'm supposed to do. And so um, I want you to go to, uh, well, let's just start out by saying some things, and we'll get into some scriptures. Um, the, uh, the Lord said to me um, back, I, I don't remember the date. I got it written down. I got every, most everything written down. But the Lord said to me back a while back, he said, I've made you a watchman over the office of the president of the United States. Yeah. Now, um, that doesn't mean that anybody has a call to prayer. All of us have a call to prayer, if you want to say it, call it a call. It's not like, prayer is not like a five-fold ministry office. Do um, you know what I mean? Um, it's, it's, a, uh, it's a giving of oneself to. Yeah. Remember Acts 6, that, uh, they told the, you know, the congregation, because there was some strife that was trying to rise up, uh, look you out among your seven men, they instituted the helps ministry, remember that? And then they said, uh, we will give ourselves continually to prayer. Yeah the ministry of the word well that's a giving of ourselves too 
all of us uh, are really called to pray. Sometimes people say, well, there are, you know, I'm an intercessor. Well, they say that with a little bit of arrogance. Yes. Yes. As if there's something special beyond the rest of us. Yes. Don't look at me in that tone of voice. I've been around these people for years, actually decades, and I know what I'm talking about. Yes, sir. They just, a lot of times, they just have a lot of pride. They think yeah. there's something special than the rest of us. Yeah. They're not. Uh-uh. All of us are intercessors. Oh, yeah. Amen. 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 In fact, Jesus is the head intercessor. He's at the right hand of the Father. He ever lives to make intercession for us. And all of us in Him yeah. are intercessors. Yeah. Amen. Some people give themselves to it more than yeah. others. Yeah. But all of us are to be intercessors. Yeah. All of us uh, have, have, all of us are called what the Bible calls priests. We've all been made kings and priests under our God. The primary privilege of a priest is access to the presence of God. Uh, and many times on behalf of others, right? You read the Old Testament about priests. Well, we all have access to the presence of God on behalf of others. That means we're prayer people. We're all prayer people and we're all intercessors. Yeah. Not all prayer is intercession and not all intercession uh, is uh, the same, but... Anyway, uh, but the point I'm making is, um, when he said to me, "I've made you a watchman over the office of the president of the Uni- office of the president of the United States," that doesn't mean that you're not some a watchman over some of these things, or that God hasn't given you a particular assignment in prayer. All of us are praying people, but maybe some of us God will use us along certain lines in prayer more than others. Yes, with me, I don't, I don't really ask for it, but he talks to me a lot about the elections and, the, and so forth yeah. and the office of the president and so forth. Yeah. Why? That just goes along with some of the, some of the uh, uh, ways he uses me, yeah. but there's ways he should be using you. If you give yourself to it, he'll yes, use sir. you too. Yes. Amen. And really, uh, 1 Timothy chapter 2, when it says, I would that first of all prayers, intercessions, giving of thanks be made for kings and all their in authority. He's not talking to ministers. He's talking to all of us. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. And so all of us should be praying uh, about some of these things in our nation. Amen. 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 Uh, so he, he had said that to me. And, uh, and so, you know, these are some things that I pray about. Now, you don't hear me talking a lot about it because, to be honest with you, most of what I would say, probably 90, 95% of what the Lord, what, what I experience in my prayer time, I don't really talk to people about. In fact, a lot of it, I don't even talk to Pastor Debbie about it. It's not telling people about it that makes you a success. It's not the whole world knowing about it uh, that makes you successful in prayer. You understand what I'm talking about? And uh, it seems like it's just sort of uh, standard today that if you get something by the Spirit, you post it on social media. Well, you're, 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 you're off. God won't trust you with a lot of things if you're posting everything he says, which a lot of it he didn't say anyway. But if you can't, if you can't just hold it in the realm of prayer where he gave it to you for, uh, uh, then, then you're not faithful to him. Amen? So social media posters are really a lot of times unfaithful, especially on things like this. That it was given to you for your prayer closet. Amen. But on the other hand, there have been times like in my life, and you realize I don't base my ministry on this, but uh, we have, you've heard us come out and say things from time to time yeah. that the Lord told me to tell the church, yeah. Yeah. told me to tell the body of Christ. Yes. Yes. And when he tells me to do that, I, I got to obey him. And to be honest with you, he told me a year ago, a year ago, January 10th, 2023. That's over a year ago. He told me I was on my. We, we went down to preach in uh, Arkansas, um, Little Rock, Arkansas. Yeah. Drove because of some circumstances, last minute changes, so we just drove and uh, drove all day, and then got down there, went to bed, and woke up Jan- March the 10th. Woke up, uh, I mean early. Woke up to the word of the Lord, yeah. wow. and he he gave me an he spoke some alarming statements to me, and he said, "Tell the body of Christ to pray." Yes. Yes. Well, I didn't do, I didn't necessarily obey that. You somebody say, why didn't you obey? Same reason you don't obey. Exactly. Come on. Come on. Come on, sir. Come on. <laughs> yeah. I'll just be honest with you. I'll tell you one reason I didn't say anything is because what, what the Lord said is not necessarily something that people with itching ears want to hear. Right. Yeah. Come on. And I took the attitude, they won't much believe me anyway if I do tell them. Well, okay. You know, that's not right. I'm not making excuses. I'm just saying that's the way I did. I had to repent last night. Yeah. He said, uh, he said uh, uh, I told you to tell my people. And he said, that's one of the, because there's been an issue you've been trying to get into my body. He said, that's one of the issues that's been trying to get into your body. Yeah. All right. Come on. Come on. 
Well, so I said, all right, Lord, I'll say it. Say it. He said with some things back in March of 2010, or excuse me, two, March 10, 2023. And then he said some things in more recent times, three different things. And we'll see how much of this we can get out this morning. But how many of you uh, can realize much of what we do here at the church, we're preaching on who you are in Christ and we're feeding you. We're giving you sheep food. Realizing that that's the main thing, and uh, and uh, I'm not uh, I'm not a uh, and, and and teaching you who you are in Christ, because the body of Christ needs to be built up. They need to they got issues in their own personal life. But how many of you know our prayer time is going to have to get beyond our own personal life? But well, I'll tell you, if you don't know it, if, if it doesn't get beyond our own personal life, this nation will be completely unrecognizable in a short period of time, because the enemy's got plans for this nation, which will affect you and I. You go over to 1 Timothy 6, or excuse me, verse, uh, or chapter number 2. What is that, chapter number 2, verses 1 down through there? Uh, that kings, we pray for kings. First of all, pray for kings, all that are in thought, that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life. Notice, pray for them yep. that we. Yep. Did you get that? Turn, turn look at that. I want you to see it, and I want you to underline it. Pray for them that we. He says that ye, but that's we. That's us, the body of Christ. For kings, did I say it right? 1 Timothy 6, uh, not 6, but 2. Verse number one, I would, first of all, the king, uh, prayer, intercession, supplications, intercession, giving thanks, be made for kings, for all that are in authority, that we. Isn't that right? That we. In other words, that's going to affect us. What happens in the government is going to affect us. That we may lead a quiet and peaceable life. You know what the devil wanted to do last night? He wanted to bring further strife into this nation. It's divided enough. But he wanted to bring further strife into this nation, and he would love a civil war in the United States of America. Somebody said, that's not possible. Well, then you haven't had some of the visions I've had. There's a potential in this nation of foreign, foreign, foreign soldiers' boots being on the soil of this nation. Now, you sit here today and think, that's not possible. This is the United States of America. It's not going to happen if we pray. But I've seen it in the spirit yes, if we sir, don't yeah. pray. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Absolutely. Some things are already in the works, not, not militarily, but uh, what's the word? Uh, secretively. Yeah. In a co-optive way. Yeah. Yeah. I know some things, and I don't tell everything I know, right. but I'm just telling you uh, that we've got to be, as believers, yes, pray. Sir. We've got to be people of prayer. Yeah. Because it's not, well, if these, if these politicians would do, no, no, if the church, yeah. if my people, yes. which are called by my name, yes, yes. will humble themselves and pray. Yes, the church. Amen. Amen. Up here. I'm, I'm, I'm preaching up here. If you can't pay any more attention than when so two people move around, then you're not going to get it this morning. Are you mad? No, I'm, I'm urgent. <laughs> I'm urgent because the Lord said some very urgent things to me back in March of 2023. And uh, so, but, uh, so we're going to get into this. And our prayer life is going to have to get beyond just me, my wife, my son John, his wife, us four, no more. You know, I got this hurt. I got this hoogamooga. I got this pain. I got this trouble. I got this need in my life, my family, my finances, my, my son's education, my, 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 my. It's going to have to get beyond you and I. It's going to have to get out into the uh, realm of this nation. Amen. And so Satan wants to bring this nation to its knees through strife. And uh, uh, without prayer in the body of Christ and walking in our authority, uh, that's going to happen. Yeah. Amen. But we're going to pray. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. Somebody said, well, is he prophesying that's going to happen? Nothing is automatic. Nothing that the devil has planned is automatic. Nothing that God has said or has planned is automatic. It's what's the church going to do with yes, what sir. God said. Yes. Yeah. That's what's, that's what's going to determine these things. Uh, so uh, back, there's things we've got to get to this morning, and we'll get to them by the grace of God. And, uh, but by prayer, Satan will not be able to operate in the evil he's endeavoring to uh, bring into this nation. And that's what I want to talk about this morning, praying to avert evil in this nation. That was evil last night. Thank God it, didn't, uh, it wasn't effective. Somebody said, are you saying that because you're for President Trump? Well, that's not really why I'm saying it. 
I'm saying it because that would have divided our nation and caused an upheaval like you have never seen in this nation. You and I have never seen. It's been in this nation before, but you and I haven't seen it. Uh, and so whenever you get within two millimeters of that happening, it ought to make you wake up. It ought to not be, oh, well. That's part of the problem if the church is, oh, well. You know what? Something else is bad is that none of us were that surprised. If you have any kind of prayer life, you knew that this was, that everything was escalating towards that. And somebody said, well, I'm so glad that's over now. It ain't over. It ain't over. I told you years ago. I told you, uh, uh, and some people, I guess, uh, maybe thought maybe we missed it. Now, actually, I went to the Lord, and I said, Lord, I'll humble myself if I missed it. I saw a timeline of him being president for eight years. And, and the second part, the first part of the second term was uh, a dark cloud over it. Somebody said, was this that dark cloud? Nope. It wasn't. Come on. Amen. Come on. Yes, sir. <clears throat> Praise the Lord. So some of you are really looking at me real funny, but that's all right. I got to say it. <laughs> I'll release my soul from, <laughs> you know, being in trouble with God. So, um, so every now and then he tells me to say some things, and he has dealt with me uh, back there in March. He dealt with me, and then and today, so I'm going to say it. But. Um, so uh, don't think that we can just stop praying because, well, that's over. No, it's gonna, they're, they're going to do anything they can. Yes. Yes. Amen. And so, uh, well, pastor, did you miss it? No. When, when I saw that eight-year eight timeline, did you miss it? No. I simply, uh, the, the Lord said to me a couple of things. I don't know if you can handle it this morning, but I'm going to say it. He said to me a couple of things. He said, uh, the body of Christ didn't get my best. He said, I didn't miss it. He said, the body of Christ didn't get my best. And he said, the reason is because he said, you, this is the way he said it to me. He said, you and many others. So I'm in on this just as much as anybody else. He said, you and many others thought that his reelection was a shoe in. And we weren't paying attention and watching over that in the spirit. And the second thing was, the body of Christ had their eyes on a man. And because of that, in those circumstances, now hear me very carefully, some of you are going to go out of here and say things that I didn't say, but because of that, in the circumstances, under the circumstances, it was not God's will for him to be elected right away because men's, men's eyes were on a man. Yes, 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 yes. And he had to get them back off of their eyes off a man, get their eyes back on God. Yes. And today, be sure your eyes are not on a man as the Savior of this nation. There is no man who is the Savior of this nation. Have you found 1 Timothy 2? Notice what it said. I put that, first of all, prayers, supplications, intercessions, giving of thanks be made for all men, for kings, for all that are in authority, that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all, all godliness and honesty, for this is acceptable and well-pleasing unto God. Who's our Savior? A politician's our Savior. No, God our Savior. God wants us to get our eyes on Him as our source as the protector of this nation. Amen. Some of us watch too much news, and then we get our prayer bur burdens from the news. I saw this coming a year ago. Why didn't you say anything? I missed it. That's just to be honest. I missed it. I should have said something. Amen. So, uh, and the Lord said, now they'll listen. He said to me, he said last night, he said, now they'll listen. And this has gone beyond just this, this church body this morning. This is going out to the world, whoever wants to hear it. Now they'll listen. Can you see how close we got to some ter terrible things in our nation? <clears throat> Amen. So, um, so now that the Lord has the body of Christ's attention, let's say some things. 
Um, so God is our Savior. Now, do you remember back years ago, Jesus, uh, uh, Brother, Brother Hagin fell, and he, I think he knocked his elbow out of joint, or I don't remember all the details, but he was at the hospital, and the Lord, well, he's on the way to the hospital, the Lord said, don't worry about it, I'll talk to you later. And then in the hospital, the Lord walked in in an open vision and talked to him for, I believe it was an hour and a half or something like that, uh, about the prophet's office, so forth and so on. But he started out his conversation talking about, you know, uh, why he knocked his out, elbow out of place, because he was got out of the perfect will of God. God, and he had, he had not been obeying him in the prophet's office and so forth and then he said uh, he said and you want you might ask me if I knew this was getting ready to happen why didn't I stop it he said and let me just let me just read it like he said it because I, I pulled this up this morning um, let me see if I can find it quick enough here uh, why didn't if, if, I, if you knew if I knew that this was going to happen why didn't uh, you might ask me why didn't I stop it then he said um, if uh, he said I could have of course but I didn't want to listen to that but I didn't want to why didn't he want to he said instead of being angry at me for not preventing it you should be glad I allowed it to happen if I hadn't permitted Satan to do this to arrest your attention Ah, so, so he opened the door to the devil, and God didn't stop it, because otherwise, if he'd have stopped it, he wouldn't have gotten Brother Hagin's attention. Hello? America, wake up. He said, if I hadn't allowed this, um, uh, he said, I could have prevented the enemy from doing it, but if I had permitted Satan to do it... Uh, if I, if I hadn't permitted Satan to do it, uh, to arrest your attention, you would not have lived past the age of 55. Because you would have continued in my permissive will instead of my perfect will. Hello? Hello? Everybody still you got there? You hearing what the Spirit's saying to us this morning? This was not God's perfect will. I'm talking about this administration right now. But He allowed it. Yes really because we allowed it yeah. Yeah. see right here you might say well Jesus allowed that no brother Hagin allowed that yeah. I'm not trying to get down on him because we all got our own thing to watch over our own lives to watch over but in our nation some things have been allowed that were not God's perfect will yes. but to be honest with you it should have gotten our attention yes. and now this ought to get yes. people's attention yes. What does God need our attention for? To get our attention off of the man, off of politics, off of the 24 news cycle, and get our attention on what's the Holy Ghost telling me to do. And I'll be honest with you, what He's telling us to do is pray. Make tremendous power available, or some things are going to happen in our nation which God never intended to happen in our nation. And if it happens, it'll be the church's fault, and I'm part of that church, so don't get down on me. Amen? So tell your neighbor it's tight, but it's right. <clears throat> now, um, you might say, uh, uh, what about, what about, uh, what about, uh, well, let's just, let's just keep going on here. Um, so the general uh, public doesn't need to know every single thing that the Holy Ghost is saying to some of us. But some things need to be said. Amen. And that's what I'm going to do this morning. Now, um, we missed it thinking that it was a shoe in for that eight hour, eight hour, eight year timeline. Um, nothing is automatic in, in God. Not even things He says is automatic. They, what He says is His will, right? But it's not, uh, it's not something, not everything he shows us is getting ready to happen is because that uh, it's his will. Some things he shows us it is his will. Some things it's not his will. But whether it's his will or not his will, it's going to be prayer that makes sure it happens. It's going to be the church taking her place that, that guarantees that happening. Amen. And so um, the... Uh, so really, one of the things, this is one of the things I started picking up back a while back, that this is going to escalate and there, there's going to be violence try to get into our nation again. We've seen it in the past to a degree. 
But, but to be honest, it's, 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 it's trying to get in in a much bigger way. Yes. 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 Amen. Because other strategies haven't been working. Strategies of the enemy haven't been working. Are you still glad you came this morning? The Lord said this to me just back uh, a number of months ago. I started asking him. I said, Lord, you said over there, what is that Isaiah? I don't have the reference in front of me, but it talks about ask of me of the things to come concerning my sons, concerning the work of my hands, command ye me. And I hadn't been asking him much about the election because, to be honest with you, I didn't want to be, whatever the Lord said, I didn't want to be classed with all the, the flaky people right. out there right. saying the Lord said this, the Lord said that. I wish they'd just go uh, sit on a beach and eat cornflakes or something and shut up. Because a lot of them don't know the Holy Ghost. They get their, they get their uh, unction from the news media. I'm sure there's been many times you've come to church and said, my goodness, this is happening in the nation. I wonder if pastor's going to talk about it. I don't get my unction from the news media. I get my unction from the Holy Ghost. And I was already getting the stirring to say something. And then last night he said, now say it. So anyway, just not too long back, I started asking. I said, Lord, you said, ask of me of the things come concerning my sons, concerning the work of my hands, command you me. And so I'm asking you what's coming for the body of Christ. I'm asking you what's coming in our nation. <clears throat> and I started talking to him. And I talked to him that way for, for a number of weeks, started asking him, spending extra time in prayer, particularly about our nation. And uh, I've never asked the Lord uh, about some of these things and him say to me, so and so is going to be the president. Well, actually, I take that back one time he did. But most of the time, he doesn't say it that way. Most of the time, he'll say things that, that it leaves it really up to the church. Like in this situation, I asked the Lord, not, not at, after last night, and I'm talking about a number of months ago because of the things I was sensing. I said, Lord, tell me, talk to me about what's to come. And he said, to, concerning the nation uh, and the election, he said two things to me. Number one, he said the church is not, well, no, excuse me, uh, back, back up. First thing he said was, uh, he said, what caused the issues in the last election have not been fixed? Now, I won't get into the details of that because I know more of what he's saying than yes. what I'm going to say this morning. Yes. The issues that caused the trouble in the last election. You hear that? Election. Yes. Yes. Not the lead up to it. The election. Yes. The election. What caused the issues in the last election have not been fixed. And I started asking him about that, and he said, that's twofold. He said, one's in the realm of the, of the, uh, the natural realm in the area of corruption. But he said, the other one is in the realm of the Spirit, in the church world, in the body of Christ. They haven't really gotten sober about praying about All some right, of these things. All right. good. I'll tell you, last night was too close. That's, right. Right. Come on. Yeah. that's too close. Yeah. Thank God for God's mercy. Yeah. I mean, if you can't see the providence of God in that, and just while, pow, he turned his head and it missed. <laughs> but that's too close. So, but uh, he said, anyway, I'll get back on. First thing he said, the corruption that caused the problems in the first election and, and the issues of the spiritual issues in the body of Christ have not been fixed. I didn't say that. The Lord said that. Someone said, well, I've made changes. Well, good, then yeah. the rest of the body of Christ needs to get with you. <laughs> but uh, then second of all, he said, he said this. He said, what's getting ready to be thrown at the body? And this is, I don't know why he said the body of Christ, because it's really at the whole nation, but he said the body of Christ. I think because the body of Christ is in authority here. He said, what's getting ready to be thrown at the body of Christ in this election they are not ready for? Did you hear that? They're, they're, it's going to be thrown at them through the devil and wicked men. And he said, they're not ready for it. Wow. Now go over to Luke chapter number 22. Yes, so somebody said, did the Lord tell you who's going to win? No, he didn't. So I don't know who's going to win. I don't know what's coming. I just know what he said. Yes, How many of you know, really, it's up to the church yes, yes. whether we listen to what he's saying to us or not. Yes. And so... Um, so, praise the Lord. Um, what he's trying to say when he says not ready, we'll see it here in Luke 22, but uh, let me just say, say something about it. He said they're not ready for what's going to be thrown at them. 
uh, he's trying to say that the church, the church, the body of Christ. Now, I mean, you know, when he says the church, he's talking about the whole body of Christ worldwide. He said, uh, or especially in this nation. But he said, they're not ready. He's talking about being ready to make power available to stop some of these things. Tremendous power available is made through prayer. Do you ever notice that in James 5? Yes, sir. Makes tremendous power available. How many of you know there's a spiritual battle on for this nation? It's not just political. It's not natural. Uh, but it's spiritual. And to be honest with you, we are of a higher authority in the land than the president of the office of the president of the United States, any senator, any congressman. We are the highest authority in the land. Read Psalm 149 when you go home and read all about it. This honor has he given to the, the, his people to be able to say, you, you, will not, you will not be in office and you will be in office. The church has the authority to do that. Amen. So, but Luke 22, have you noticed, uh, this, this is a passage you're probably familiar, about, familiar with. Um, this illustrates what the Lord said to me, especially that second part about the church isn't ready for what's going to be thrown at them through the devil and wicked men in this election. Luke 22, 31 through 32. Um, well, I didn't write it down. Let me go over here and, and uh, look at it. I want you to look at it in the Amplified, actually, because the Amplified brings out so much more. Are you all glad you came this morning? Uh, so Luke 22, verses 31 and 32 in the Amplified. This is when Jesus was getting ready to be crucified. Amplified says, Simon, Simon, Peter. Listen, St uh, Satan has asked excessively that all of you, really talking about all the disciples, but particularly Peter, you be given up, ask that, uh, that all of you be given up to him out of the power and keeping of God. Satan wanted Peter. Because, and really all the disciples, but especially Peter. Uh, because of the plan of God. How many of you know the devil could see the anointing on Peter? God had, uh, the plans of God was that Peter would be leading the church after Jesus left, in the, in the flesh left, you know. And so Peter could, uh, Peter, that was the plan of God for Peter, and the devil could see that anointing. And you read in Acts 12, the devil goes after certain. Yeah. And that says there in Acts 12, 1, he went after certain in the church. He can see, he doesn't know everything. The devil doesn't know everything, but he can see the anointing on people. Yeah. Yeah. He can see the dealings of God on yeah. their lives, yeah. and he can see something's up with them. I don't yeah. like it. I got to take them out. Come on. Come on. Yeah. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And so he targets certain ones. Now that's true in the uh, natural realm. That's true when God raises somebody up in a nation. Tell your neighbor he's preaching better than your amen. Now, so Satan has asked excessively. In other words, he was trying to get Jesus to give him up out of the power and keeping of God that he might sift all of you like grain. But I have prayed. Whoo, thank you, Jesus. Thank God for Jesus. Oh, somebody said, I'm so glad he's, Jesus is praying today, not on his own. I have, I have differences with people who say, Jesus is praying for the church. No, he anoints men to pray for the church. And he takes what they say. He, he's the go-between between us and God. He takes what we say in prayer to the Father. But he's not praying like he prayed here for the church today. That's our place today. I could prove that with verses in Hebrews, but I don't have time to get into that. But, uh, you know, Jesus actually himself said the day is coming whenever you'll not say to me, ask the Father. He said, because the Father loves you and you can ask the Father. Jesus said that in John's gospel. Now, he said, but I have prayed especially for you, Peter, that your own faith may not fail, and when you yourself have turned again, strengthen and establish your brethren. I have prayed for you, Peter. In other words, Satan wanted Jesus to, get, to give Peter up out of the power and keeping of God. The devil wanted Peter, but so did Jesus. There's a spiritual battle going on over Peter. You got ears to hear this morning? There's a spiritual battle going on in our nation this morning over good and evil, righteousness and unrighteousness. Now, you might say, well, are you saying everything President Trump did or does is right? No, in some ways, he's a very foolish man. 
but God's called him and God's used him. Exactly. Yes. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. In spite of himself. Yes, sir. Just like all of us. Yes, sir. So don't get off on that with me. Well, he's this. Well, he's that. Well, so is everybody else. They're human beings. God uses imperfect vessels. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Now, uh, that, 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 there, there's hope for all of us is what I'm saying. <laughs> Amen. And so I want you to see that Peter wasn't ready spiritually for what was going to be thrown at him. Remember, because you might say, what's this all about? I prayed for you, Peter. Satan's wanted you. How many of you know within, I don't know how many days of this, uh, it wasn't very, just very long, within a few days or whatever it was, I'd have to look it up, but Peter's standing, and he denied Jesus three times. Yeah. He's fallen for the trap of the devil. He's fallen for the trap of the devil. Yeah. Isn't that right? Yes, he wasn't ready for what was getting thrown at him. Yeah. He thought he was. He boasted about it. I'll never deny you. Yeah. And here he is denying Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. He was willing to not. Right. He was willing to do the right thing. Yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. But he wasn't ready for what was getting thrown at him. Can you see that? He wasn't ready in his case for this kind of temptation. And so without Jesus' prayers making supply of, of the power of God available, Peter would not be a name that we know much about. Peter would not have been used like he was used. What about today? Without the church praying and making power available, some things won't go the way God intends for them to go. Amen. Aren't you glad for somebody spiritual enough, in this case Jesus, spiritual enough to pick up what the devil was trying to do and stand up in the gap and make intercession and say, No, you don't. Not here. I'm not giving him up out of the power and keeping of God. That Jesus made tremendous power available to stop the plans of the enemy and to keep the plan of God moving yeah. forward. Yeah. Yeah. Nothing's automatic. The plan of God won't automatically move forward just because, well, we can see, we can see what the plan of God is. Just seeing it's not enough. Amen. Amen. Now, Matthew 26, 41, uh, here's what ready looks like. Here's what ready looks like. Matthew or shows us what ready looks like. Matthew 26, 41. This is whenever uh, they're in the garden. Jesus is in the garden praying. And he asked his disciples to pray with him. You remember that? And they were so spiritual that they all started out. And before they knew it, they're just cutting Z's. Uh, <laughs> But, uh, but Jesus went and woke him up. Now notice what he said in verse 41. Watch and pray that you enter not into temptation. He said, the spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. And then he went and prayed some more. You know the story. And uh, they, they, they helped him a whole lot there. They just kept on cutting Z's. <laughs> right? So what does ready look like? It looks like watching and praying and not just being, you know, uh, uninterested. Right. When the devil, uh, when, when, when God shows you what the devil's trying to do. I mean, anybody now can see what the devil's trying to do. Right. You don't even have to watch and pray. Now you can Come see on. what the devil's trying to do. Come on. Right? Yeah. Am I getting too tight and right this morning? Because some of you. <laughs> Amen. God, our Savior. Yes. God, our Savior. Yes. But he's trying to use men. He's got to use men. Yes. Right? So, um, notice what ready looks like. It looks like watching and praying. Why? So that you don't enter into temptation. In other words, so that you don't enter into what the enemy was, was the, the strategies of the enemy to take you out. And uh, in this nation, what happens in the nation is not just up to the, the people in politics praying. It's up to us praying. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. So uh, what, what, is, what, is, what is happening here? Because of Jesus making power available, Satan's strategies could not, that he intended to work, yeah. Yeah. could not happen. Yeah. I mean, Satan yeah. start, I mean, uh, excuse me, Peter started falling for it, but he recovered himself. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Hallelujah. How many of you know God's best is not to rescue ourselves after having fallen, but God's best is to pick things up ahead of time in prayer and stop them from happening even before they happen? Yes, sir. Amen. Amen. And so, uh, you know, the Bible says over there, I don't have this verse written down, uh, that we should pray that we be delivered from wicked and unreasonable men. Yes. From wicked and unreasonable men. Their wickedness makes them unreasonable. 
murder is not reasonable is going to cause more problems. Yeah. That's right. Amen. Amen. So um, the, th the church has the authority to stop these things. God holds the church responsible for what happens in a nation. Praise God. Aren't you glad that was averted last night? But that was too close. <laughs> And don't think, okay, it's, we're, we're, we're going to breeze into the plan of God now. No. Come on. Come on. No. It's going to take more praying. Yep. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Don't get drunk on celebration. We haven't got it all yet. And the devil's not going to roll over and play dead now. So we've got to pick these cues up in the spirit. We're not natural people. We're supernatural people. Amen. And we're to have our eyes on God yes. and follow this in here yes. rather than follow the news and get our yep. burden to pray from the news. Yep. Oh, yeah. I heard people saying last night, I, I, you know, I, I, when that started, I just started praying. I thought, well, if you were paying attention to the Holy Ghost, you would have picked this up yep. way back yep. and started praying. Yep. Amen. Yep. Now, I will say this. Whenever, whenever the last election happened, I know, you might say, he's getting political today. No, I'm trying to tell the body of Christ how things work. Yes. Yes. Trying to give you illustrations. I wish I, could, I wish I could just teach the Word and everybody would get it, but most people don't get it, so you've got to give illustrations. Yes, yes sir. Yes. Come on. So he said, in the last election, he said, you and, and others like you thought that the, the, uh, Donald Trump's re-election was a shoe-in. <laughs> Amen. Amen. And he said, so you weren't praying like you should have been, getting over into the Spirit. And then because people's eyes got on him, I, it, I, didn't want, I wanted to get the church's attention. Yeah. Now, some people have trouble with that, but that's between them and God. That's, yeah, yeah. You go work it out between you and Jesus. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. Yeah. But um, anyway, and he said, then he said to me, he said, don't think, though, that your, this was after the election last time. Let me go down here and read it just like he said it, because how many of you want to hear it straight from him? Because yeah. I was just his secretary that day, so to speak. Um, then Jesus went on to say, Now concerning you and others' prayers for the election, this is the last time, don't completely lose heart because your prayers concerning this nation have been effective to a degree. The way you and others in the body of Christ have been praying and exercising authority had, has and will continue to diminish that demon's power, although it doesn't stop him and keep him from taking over. The, it, it didn't stop him and keep him from taking over the office of the president. You haven't gotten him to stand off, or excuse me, you have gotten him to stand off to a degree. Listen very carefully. The Lord went on to say, some things that would have happened under this presidency now won't because of the church's prayers although it was God's best that it be stopped and, and not even get to this point. I mean, the Lord, the Lord will meet us wherever we meet Him. If we pick it up ahead of time and avert the whole thing, that's God's best. But how many of you notice there's the good, the acceptable, and the perfect will of God? Sometimes we don't get the perfect will of God. In my life, at times, I haven't always got the perfect will of God. If you've always gotten the perfect will of God, then we'll stop serving Jesus and go to serving you. No, we've all, we've all missed the perfect will of God at some point in our lives. I'm a work in progress. I don't know about you. I do know about you. I've been, I, I know about you. But, uh, so, but uh, he said, you'll see uh, a limit on this administration. Now, I don't know if you've been paying attention, but some things have been struck down several times and stopped. However, there are things that that demon wants to do um, but he won't be able to do it because uh, uh, just, just won't be able to uh, because it was pushed off through prayer um, stand in faith use your authority and the plan of the enemy as you have you been as, uh, uh, against the plan of the enemy as you have been doing but continue to reach for this deeper, pl deeper place in the spirit that going forward you must go to to have my best that was the thing that was bothering me in the previous election. I couldn't get over into that deeper place of the Spirit. And now I know why. Because the Lord wanted us to get our eyes off of that man. Yes. Yeah. I don't know if you're understanding this yes, or not. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So, um, so much. I could talk about so much. But um, Luke 22 here, there was a plan of the enemy and Jesus made power available to Peter and that plan was averted right 
And so there's things today that with, by praying will be delivered from wickedness yes. and evil in our nation. Amen. Amen? Yes. Especially if we pick up our cues in the Spirit yes. and rather than turn away and act like God didn't even uh, uh -huh. deal with us to pray, we turn to prayer. Yes. Now don't let the enemy say, but I'm such a, uh, you know, uh, insignificant part of the body of Christ. Uh -huh. What, does, what, what good does my prayers have to, to do with changing the whole course of a nation? <clears throat> well, you're in a higher seat. You're seated with Jesus in heavenly places. Yes. Amen. You're in a higher seat. And then to be honest with you, in prayer, if you'll be faithful in prayer, God will give you the spirit of seeing and knowing. Yes. He'll show you some of the plans of the enemy, yes. not because it's His will, but so you can stop it. Yes. Amen. Yes. Amen. Amen. Yes. Hallelujah. Let me tell you something that will help some of us to uh, be more accurate in hearing what the Holy Ghost is saying. Anybody want to help be more accurate in hearing what the Holy Ghost is saying? Turn off the false prophets. I get amazed. I've had people from this congregation walk up to me and say, Oh, I just love this program. I thought, Dear God, do they even know that's a false prophet? Come on. Come on. Come on. Yes, sir. Come on now. Not paying attention to the Holy Ghost. God's not having a prophet get up and prophesy about the nation every Come service. Come on. Yes, sir. Well, anyway. So, praise God. Sometimes you just got to say some things. So, um, but the Lord has said to me a couple of times, warn this nation. Uh, uh, excuse me, warn, warn my people what's trying to get into this nation. Anyway, so I have to tell them because I get in trouble with God. Now, so tell your neighbor, I'm so glad I came this morning. What this ought to be, uh, what, what the Holy Ghost is saying ought to be is a call to prayer. Yes. And if yes. we're not paying attention to that, things like what happened last night, tried to happen last night, ought to wake us up to pray. Yes. And I don't mean just for a day or two. Exactly. Come on. Yes. Amen. 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 Carnal people pray whenever they see something. I'm talking about in the natural. Yes. Spiritual people pray because the Holy Ghost yes. keeps stirring up their, their spirit to pray. Yes. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. God's, God is compassionate. The Lord loves His people, the body of Christ. Not everybody in this nation is the body of Christ. I'm not saying that at all. But there's a big body. Uh, the bi there's a lot of people in the body of Christ in this nation. Yes. And He's interested in the nation because He's interested in His people. Yes. He's compassionate. Yeah. So he'll move on us to pray. Yeah. Because he doesn't want certain things for his people. Yeah. And God will bless the nation, the whole nation. Yeah. God will bless stupid politicians for the church's sake. Amen. Amen. So, um, um, praise God. I, I don't like doing this kind of thing. This is a little uncomfortable for me. I'm not flamboyant by nature. I don't try to draw attention to myself. I'm not trying to get clicks on YouTube. On. Right? In fact, that you, you can ask, I got witnesses here. Where's Vanessa? Where's Vanessa? There she is. I think Teresa heard me in the back room. I said, this service this morning will not be live streamed because I don't want the, the, the whatever people have to say about it. I really don't care what people have to say about it. Yeah. Instead of we're here in praise and worship and the Lord started dealing with me, no, just don't say this and this and this, and then you can live stream. And I said, Lord, I don't want to live stream it. <laughs> but I guess I'm not the head of the church. <laughs> that was supposed to be funny. <laughs> Besides that, well, I don't like to build my ministry on this kind of thing. I build my ministry. I was brought up under Brother Hagin, Dr. Frayne, Pastor Nancy, and they trained me well. They trained me, build your ministry on the Word of God. So, what is it, 99 point whatever percent of the time you come in here, you're getting food for your own life, yeah. right? Yeah. But every now and then, i got to step yeah. over into this. Yeah. Now, go to Ezekiel 22, verse number, uh, let's see here. Where is it? So, Ezekiel 22, thought I had that written down too. It took a lot of this down quick, so I don't think I wrote the verses down. And let me find it here. Ezekiel chapter 22, and... Uh, what is it here? Anybody know what I'm looking for? Yes, verse 30. Thank you. Thank you very much. That's a blessing that you all know about this verse. 
Yes, because it's important. Ezekiel 22, verse 30. And I sought for a man. Now, well, if you go back there, he, in the previous verse, he said there was getting ready some things to happen in their nation. I'll, I'll just paraphrase that. You can read that later. He said, I sought for a man among them that should make up the hedge and stand in the gap. Now, that's another term for intercession. If you just want to mark, you know, put, the, yes. put a line over to the margin of your Bible and write intercession. Make up, the, uh, make up the hedge and stand in the gap before me for the land that I should not destroy it, but I found none. Therefore have I poured out mine indignation upon them. I have consumed them with fire of my wrath. Their own ways have I recompensed upon their heads, saith the Lord. Now that's sowing and reaping. You, re you analyze verse number 31. It's sowing and reaping. It's not like God's saying, I'm just going to swat them. It's they had sown certain seed, and they're going to reap that yeah. unless somebody prays and asks God for mercy. Yeah. Yeah. That's, a, that's a spiritual law on the earth, yeah. whether it's working for an individual, a family, yeah. a city, or a whole nation, or the whole world. It's caught up with the whole world a couple of times. Yeah. The flood was yeah. judgment falling on the whole world. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Now, um, and that's what the uh, tribulation is again, by the way. We're not in the tribulation, but I'm just saying. <laughs> anyway, so, but he said, verse number 30, I sought for a man. There were some things happening in the nation. I looked for somebody to make intercession so it wouldn't happen, and he didn't find anybody. Yeah. That's an indictment yeah. on the people of God back then. Uh, that's not true today. I know there's people praying. I know you pray, right? Yeah. And, uh, and so forth. But... Um, there, there's things that unless we, you can see very clearly here there's things that unless we pray will happen that God never intended to happen yeah. yes. you can see God's will in this and that he's looking for somebody to ask him that it not happen yes. somebody said well God wanted, to, to, wanted it to be destroyed the Bible said he didn't even have any pleasure in the uh, death of the wicked That's right. yep. That's right. he doesn't have pleasure in evil things happening right. to an individual to a nation or anything he's, right. he's not that way he's a good God yeah. So you can see his will here. He's looking for somebody to ask him to, to, to spare this yeah. nation, yeah. right? But he couldn't find anyone. Right. So what we see was it came because nobody asked him, nobody yeah. stood in the gap, right, yep. Yep. and prayed. And just like we see in Luke 22, we can see here that prayerlessness gave things up that God longed to do for his people. Right. Yeah. Things were lost yeah. that God wanted to do for his people. Yeah. Amen? Can you see that? Yes, and so we've got a couple of witnesses here, don't we? People say, well, God's running everything. No, He's not running everything. Right. He's not sovereign in the way most people think He's sovereign. Now, I didn't say He wasn't sovereign yep. in the way the Bible calls Him sovereign, right, right. but He's not sovereign in the way most people think. In other words, that He's just running everything. Uh -huh. He's able to do, because He really gave man authority down here in the Garden of Eden, yeah. right? And so that's why we have verses like uh, James 5.16 in the Amplified, prayer makes tremendous power available. What does that power do? It, it changes things that otherwise it would have gone the wrong direction. Yes. Hallelujah. And so uh, did you get anything out of that? Yes. Let me just finish up by what he said back in March. Would that be all right? Yes. So um, this is not fun, <laughs> but I'm just going to have to say it. Because he told me, tell my people. So I was back there. Like I said, we went down to uh, uh, Arkansas in, uh, what was that, March of uh, 2023 to preach. And went down there and uh, drove all day. Got down there. and You know, when you drive all day and so forth, you sleep good. <laughs> so I slept real good. And, uh, but anyway, uh, woke up the next morning and I heard the word of the Lord. And the Lord said, this is, right when I woke up, and this is the way it happens with me sometimes, I don't, I guess it's because I'm aware of more, uh, my mind's quiet, yeah. and I'm more aware of God yeah. in my spirit or something, because it just happens this way a lot of times. It came up out of my spirit, and it was strong. It wasn't just a, just a nice, gentle voice. This was not just the inner witness. This was, I heard this voice. He said, this is the, the Lord talking about our nation. He said, the dollar is in trouble. The government is being co-opted. The nation is in mortal danger, all while the church is in a spiritual slumber. Awaken my people. Call them to pray. The time is short, and it can be, that it can be turned, and this nation be spared the worst of that which is intended by the enemy. That's a lot in one short statement. Now, you say, what on earth is he talking about? 
Well, I went to prayer about it. I said, God, have mercy. And I started praying about it. And since that time, he's talked to me a lot about it. And I'm out of time already. <laughs> so, but I can't go into all that. But you say, what on earth is this? The dollar is in trouble. Now, this is before we started seeing some of the things that have been happening in a more recent time. But the, the dollar is the reserve currency of the world. Let me rephrase that. Has been the reserve currency of the world. And if you knew what that meant to your way of living and how much, good, how much that helped your way of living, then you'd know the seriousness of what he said here. And then he said, the dollar's in trouble. You know, nations today are turning away left and right from trading in dollars. And they're turning in their dollars and putting the reserve currency in something like gold or whatever, something else at an unprecedented rate. Somebody said, what important, what, what, what's that, why is that important? It's important to your standard of living. Really important to your standard of living. This was before we started hearing much about the dollar being in trouble. When the Lord said this back in March, at least I hadn't heard much about it. Well, somebody said, well, then what does that mean? Does anybody remember when the Lord spoke to me and said, tell my people? <laughs> Again, this is one of those I have to tell. Not everything do I want to tell, but he says, tell my people. Yeah. See, I got to stand before the Lord and give account, so I'm, <laughs> whatever you think about is not important. That's just whenever I stand before him, that's what's important. Yeah. But he said, tell my people not to, uh, not to be afraid of what's coming. He said, if they'll pay attention to the leading of my spirit, I'll have and, and do what I tell them to do financially, what's coming on the nation. Tell them that they'll avert a lot of things that others won't avert. Remember that? I don't, yes, I'm not quoting it word for word, but some of you remember that? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Um, when was that? The beginning. Actually, that was, that was just a couple of months before this, actually. You know, now that I think about it, it was just de December before this. So put those two things together. Huh? Pay real close attention to what you have. Now, now see somebody. Okay, Lord. No, Lord. Okay, thank you. Yes, Lord, I won't do that. I won't do that. But study on the dollar. Amen. He told me not to say that, so I can't say that. Um, study on the dollar. Somebody said, study on the dollar. I can tell by you looking at your face. You would have no clue what I'm talking about. Yeah. Study on the dollar. Yeah. On. Study the dollar. Yes. Yes. Study what it is. Yes. Somebody yes. said, it's money. No, it's not. What? I have no clue what you're talking about. That's why you need to study on the dollar. Yes, sir. <laughs> Anyway, that's as far as the Lord let me go on that. What's this? He will let me say this. He said, uh, the dollar's in trouble. The government is being co-opted. That one was a shocker to me. But when he said it, see, when these kinds of things happen, I don't know if you understand how these things happen, but when he said it, I could see it. Yeah. And there's things that you can see that you know that you don't know quite how to explain. Yeah. But he said, the government is being co-opted. When they said it, I knew exactly what he's talking about. Yeah. And it's been, it's been happening especially. It's, it was happening before this administration. But under this administration, the, the foreign nations took a lot of ground in this government. Yes, sir. When I heard this, I, I didn't really understand what he was saying, except I saw some things. And I looked up the word co-opted afterwards. It means covert operations whereby outsiders take possession of some group of governing body or, or governing body to use it for their own purposes. Uh, one group gains power over another group corruptly. It's done deceptively, unknowingly with the cooperation and embrace of the original group. It's a forced takeover, but it's not realized immediately until it is too late. Amen. And he will let me say this. He'll let me say this. Y'all still paying attention? He'll let me say this. China's influence over this nation has gotten to be crazy. Amen. Why? Why? And, and you might say, well, he's talking about so-and-so. He's talking about this politician. Well, then why are all the rest of them quiet? Because he's gotten more ground than you realize. The yes. Spirit of God told me a number of years ago, and I'm saying a lot of things I haven't said for a long time. Because I'll be honest with you, I want to live in divine health. Yes. Yes. Come on. Yes. 
But the Spirit of God said to me a number of years ago, He said, if, if people knew 10% of the corruption that's happening in this, in this nation, He said they wouldn't be able to handle it. That's what He told me. You say, are you a conspiracy theorist? No, I'm listening to the Holy Ghost. Yes, sir. Amen. 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 So, praise the Lord. <clears throat> praise God. Tell your neighbor, we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna get some things stopped. I saw in the Spirit a number of years ago. I had a pastor friend of mine, and he heard me tell it. He said, Pastor Jay, I got to call you. He, he, he called me. He said, I got to He texted me. He said, I got to call you. Call him. I want to talk to you. He said, I heard what you said. He said, I've been having a, a recurring dream for a, period of, for a long period of time. And he said, there's, four, there's, there's, four, there's uh, uh, the feet, the boots, the military boots of foreign nations uh, yes. marching on this soil. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. He said, I've had that dream. He said, I heard what you said. That's in line with what God keeps telling me. Wow. Yes. I said, well, brother, I said, don't put your own interpretation on it. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Come on. Come on. Because how many of you know where people miss it the most is in timelines? Yes. Yeah. timing of things some of these things I don't know how much and I'm not here to tell you how much now somebody said is he saying the dollar is going down I didn't say that I'm saying pay attention to what you do pay attention to what the Holy Ghost is saying to you. I did not say so some of this might be pushed off until the uh, the the, the uh, tribulation I don't know it's up to the church I would say either pray and stop it or else you <laughs> watch out for where you got your money <laughs> It would be best to do both. Yeah. 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 Praise God. Yeah. <laughs> Least I'll deliver my soul when I leave here, Lord Jesus. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Well, I think you've got enough to be able to... Maybe you're up to here. I don't know. Praise the Lord. What's the whole point? The whole point. Sit back and watch the show? No, no, no. Pray. What happens in this nation affects you and I. Yes, sir. Boy, he's a fear monger. No, I'm not. I'm trying to wake up the body of Christ. Yes, sir. Wake up the body of Christ and pray because none of this has to happen on our watch. And I'm determined it's not going to happen on my watch. Amen. See, we as Americans haven't had any foreign troops on our soil since the, since the uh, Revolutionary War. And we think it's not possible. You need to go back and, uh, and read maybe some, some it's, I think it's probably on the internet, uh, but, uh, or watch some of the things about the vision George Washington had about the future of the United States of America. Yes. Amen. Two of the battles have already taken place. The Revolutionary War and the Civil War on the soil of this nation. We've been on, in battles all over the world, but not on the soil of this nation. Y'all still with me? But the third one hasn't happened yet. Right. Somebody said, when is that? I'm sure going to do my best to make sure it's over in yes. the tribulation. Yes. <laughs> yes. Amen. Yes. Amen. But the devil wants to get it on. Yes. Yes. And if we just sit back and twiddle our thumbs and allow it to happen, then he'll be able to do what he wants. How many of you say, no, not on my watch? In Jesus' name. Somebody said, boy, this is sure different for Pastor Jay this morning. Yeah, I want to get, I want to stand before the Lord and say, I want to hear him say, well done. <laughs> because I had to, I had to say something. He said, tell my people. So I got to tell my people, his people, not my people, his people. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. You know, the, really the church is redeemed from whatever goes on all around us. But it sure is best if all this stuff isn't going on all around us. There were people that God protected. You know, they were in military uh, operations in World War II, for example. Protected them all the way through that. But how many, it would have been much better if we just hadn't had to go over there and do all that. Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Woo! Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God, praise God, praise God, praise God. Father, we lift up this nation in the name of Jesus. We plead the blood over it. We plead the blood over it. We, we, we believe you for mercy, Father. Have mercy on our nation. We, uh, we pray for kings and all that are in authority. All that you want to be in authority. All the men and the lady, women and ladies that are being raised up. 
whether it be in the local level, whether it be on the state level, whether it be on the national level. Father, we pray that you would, uh, as your word says, that when the righteous are in authority, the people rejoice. We pray for righteous men, people with sound minds, men and women with sound minds. Father, deliver us from wicked and unreasonable men who don't have faith, who think the only way to go about it is through the arm of the flesh. Father, but we are people of faith. Father, we know there's a better way, and that is to deal with things in the spirit realm and not in the flesh realm. So, Father, we take our place this morning, and we say, Satan, you will not have your way in this nation. In the authority of the name of Jesus. Father God, as you move on us, yes, Lord, I remember you said that. You said some of these things can't be dealt with just by the prayer of faith can't be dealt with by the decree of faith, can't be dealt with with a prayer of agreement, but they have to be dealt with under the anointing of the Spirit in these deeper places of prayer. And so, Father God, we thank you that you've invited us into that deeper place of prayer. We thank you that we're welcome there. We take advantage of that open door, that invitation to come into your presence and pray these things out so that the enemy's plans would be averted God's plans would be promoted. Hallelujah. And that we would lead a quiet and peaceable, uh, in a quiet and peaceable way in this land. In the name of Jesus. Give our intelligence officials insight into schemes and strategies of the enemy. In the name of Jesus, we pray that all strategies of the enemy would be exposed. In the name of Jesus. And Father, as you move on us to pray in the Holy Ghost and pray in these deeper places, I thank you that you'll even give us utterance for specific things that our minds know not of in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name, say amen. amen. A number of uh, months ago, I, don't, over, I think it was over a year ago, um, the Lord, I'm, I'm praying, and the word of the Lord came to me. And sometimes I'm not talking or talking to the Lord about the nation or thinking about the nation, but I'm just minding my own business. And the word of the Lord comes, and He said to me, and He named a person's name, which I'm not at liberty to say, but He named a person's name, a man who's uh, had ambitions politically, named a person's name, and I heard the Holy Ghost say, named his name, and said, so and so will never be president of the United States. So I know what that is. That's something he said it to me. He wants me to declare it. So we've got to learn how these things work. And so he, he, uh, sa- I heard him say that. It wasn't the witness. See, the difference between the witness and the word of the Lord coming to you. And so whenever I heard that, I said right out loud exactly what I heard the Holy Ghost say. And I went to Pastor Nancy about it because she's my pastor. I asked her to judge these things and so forth and so on. And she said, I, I told her what the Holy Ghost said. And, And I said, I perceive that the Lord needed somebody. He can use anybody He wants. He uses many of us, right? Right? He uses all of us. But I'm just telling experiences. I can't tell about your experiences. I don't know about yours. I just know about mine. So, but he said, uh, I I told Pastor Nancy what the the Lord said. And uh, I said, it seems to me like there was, whenever it came to me like that, there was a, uh, there were strategies being designed in smoke-filled rooms, if you know what I mean by that. They don't smoke as like, smoke like they used to, but that used to be the term. You know, backroom deals. We'll promote you to be in this office if you do this for us, and we'll pay you off, and you know, all that. I said, it seemed like there was something going on behind closed doors. She said, yep, yep, yep. Amen. How many of you know the Holy Ghost will uh, give you divine intelligence? <clears throat> give you intelligence briefings that not even the intelligence community knows about. (laughs) Hallelujah. 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 Praise God. We do politics by the Holy Ghost. Amen. 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 I said we. That's a good place for you to add your faith with mine. We, we means you and me. We do politics by the Holy Ghost. Amen. How many of you know getting out there and holding up a sign isn't going to do much? but getting over in the spirit and dealing with things. (laughs) Hallelujah. 
If God let me, I'd stop preaching and just deal with this all the time in, in my prayer class. Just let, me, just let me go to pray. I'd just pray things out. Amen. Nobody know my name. Nobody ever knew it happened. Sometimes, though, you got to say some things. Amen. Praise the Lord. Lift up both hands and say, thank you, Jesus. In the name of Jesus, this nation will fulfill the plan of God. In Jesus' name, I'm going to bring my supply to what God wants to do in my nation. Thank you, Lord, for using me as you see fit. I will respond to you. I will obey the promptings of the Holy Ghost. And you will be able to flow through me in order to be an agent of your will. Here am I. I'm available. Use me. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. I just perceive, how many of you sense this? I just perceive it would have gone differently last night if the body of Christ hadn't been praying. I do. But, that, but, but I'm just saying, let's not just quit and give up now. Amen. Thank God for his goodness, right? Father, we give you praise in Jesus' name. Now, let me say this. I want to say this again just before we go. Don't get your eyes on him, though. That's, that's a big mistake. Keep your eyes on the Lord. Uh, if, if God, and, and how I can say, if I had time, I'm out of time. But there's things that he had to make adjustments on, too, for God to be able to continue to use him. And apparently, from what I'm seeing, he must have made some of those adjustments. Amen. He can be an arrogant person. But it's not him doing this. It's divine power flowing through him. And so don't, don't get off on, you know, lust. Anyway, so but, but the point I'm saying is keep your eyes on the Lord. And God doesn't have to use one particular man. He's got, he can raise up. He, he did in the Old Testament. He raised up a donkey and used a donkey. So it's not about a man. Don't get your eyes on a man. Get, keep your eyes on God and his plan. Praise the Lord. And if God can't use one, there's others available. Praise God. Turn to your neighbor and say, thank God for what the Word says to this morning. Amen. How many of you are going to come to the, uh, we got a few minutes here before 12, but get over to the baptism. Are you coming to the baptismal? There's some folks who want to celebrate their, their identity in Christ, right? And uh, testify to the fact they belong to Him. And we want to be there and, and uh, bear witness to that. Praise God. So we're excited about that. Um, their maps are, pardon me? The maps are, I believe, in the foyer. Um, find, find somebody who knows where they're going if you don't know where you're going. I think I'm going to follow somebody because the buildings aren't marked that well from what I hear. But anyway, so uh, there are lunch meals available, right? Go get that if you bought that, if you purchased that, and uh, be over there at uh, 1 o'clock. It starts at 1. If you're being baptized, you have to be there at 1245 because we want to just share a few things about the baptismal with you. All right? Hallelujah. You're dismissed.